The secret to saving time in ZBrush is to change the UI, to fix the UI. Let's be honest, ZBrush's UI really isn't that great. And I'm a Blender user, so that is saying a lot. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about, yes, how to change the UI, but there's a million videos that do that. More importantly, we're gonna talk about how to intelligently design your UI to leverage as much time-saving strategies as possible. So the first thing you need to understand is the difference between menus and shortcuts. All of this, shortcuts. Okay, they are temporary, they can change. These up here, those are menus. We reference items and menus um, as shortcuts. These menus we can't change. Over here, there's a docking station. Here's a docking station with another menu docked. And down here, there's another docking station. You can dock whole menus up um, in those different areas. But over here, we're gonna just basically uh, put shortcuts. So how do you do that? You go up to preferences, config, you hit enable customize. And now if you hit control alt, you can move things around like this, okay? So let's go ahead and first of all, delete things you don't use. That's the first time saving strategy. What don't you use? Alternate, I never push this button, it's gone. Switch color, use it. Gradient, never use it. And then just holding control alt, you can basically slide these things around, move them to where you need them. And then you just go through and look and see what you use and see what you don't use. So I'm just gonna throw these away, throw these away, cause I don't use them. The next thing you're gonna need to look at is what do you use now that we've saved so much space? Um, so for example, I, I like to dock brushes that I use all the time. Um, so for example, the chisel brush, I love the chisel brush. If I grab and move it though, control alt, you can see that it moves it because it's this is just the shortcut. So I want to dock a permanent reference. So go to brush and then I can just go ahead and grab this and put it here. And you can see I can put brushes down there. Um, some people don't put brushes down here. Put things that you use a lot. Don't, you know, just try and follow my menus. Try and make your own that you like to use. So I'm gonna put an auto masking, back face mask, because I use that constantly. I don't know why that's just not on by default. Okay, now once you have something you like, go to preferences, save UI, and you save it as whatever you want. And you can load it. But if you want to load it on startup, you need to go and after saving it, hit store config, and this will always just load up your custom UI. So I already have this, and you can see that I have this loaded up here. I have lazy mouse, uh, lazy snap, because I use those a ton. Homepage, I didn't take that off even though I don't use it because it's symmetrical. I have the brush height, and that whole side, the whole right side is basically blank. And so I basically just design it around my needs. Make it, rule of thumb, if you use it on a, on a Daily basis, if you use these buttons on every session, use that, okay? If you have multiple UIs, you can actually say those differently and then load those separately as well if you want, okay? Okay, so now that we have all of those buttons basically propagated, let's talk about the tool. I probably spent about five to 10% of my time here in the tool palette, which is a lot of time, a lot of time. Uh, to prove my point, close it, collapse this, and try and work without opening this up and see how hard it is. It's nearly impossible. You're over here all the time. So what I've done is I basically created uh, customized menus assigned to hotkeys that I can go click and just open it up. And now boom, I have something that I use all the time right where I'm working and I don't have to disrupt my workflow by going over here, clicking something, going back. And I can just, you know, rearrange something on the fly within seconds as opposed to 30 tens of seconds. I have another sub menu with more, more things like Dynamesh and Deformations and Mask. So I kind of make these different things assigned to different hotkeys. So to do this, you go to preferences, uh, create new menu. You gotta be so careful because this is permanent. So save your UI and then basically create this new menu and then save it. Uh, I have two basically, you can see I put there at the top, I did ZZRAA because I do like the ZZ to be at the end there. So create new, I'm gonna call this ZZ custom menu. Very classy, right? So now I have a custom menu over here. Um, it's, it's basically empty. So I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, it's, it's blank. So I'm gonna dock this over here to the side. I already have everything else docked here because it's my custom UI. Um, Material is always there by default, but I'm just gonna grab this, grab this little circle with the arrow and drag it. And now my custom menu is docked over there. So you can dock it over to any side you want. I'm just gonna put it over here for, for argument's sake. Go to preferences, it's custom sub palette, control alt. And then you basically drag that over to this and you can see it creates a sub palette, okay? Now we can drag anything we want into the sub palette that we want. So just for, you know, demonstration, I'm gonna just show you some things that you probably don't want in there. Deformations, um, control alt, drag that mirror there. Control alt, polish, or why not? And then I'm just gonna put a couple things here just to show my point. You put things that you're gonna use a lot of, 
Okay, control alt, you can rename this, so deformations. And there we go. Now we have a custom menu, and if you click here, you can see that it has a sub a sub tool, and there you go. Now my other ones, I have like four sub tools in it. So let's make another sub tool. So go to preferences, custom sub palette, sorry. Uh, control alt drag that, you can rearrange it to anywhere you want. So I'm gonna move that up like that. And then let's do uh, <laughs> fiber mesh. Everyone uses fiber mesh all the time. Control alt drag that there. And there you go, you can see you can propagate this with whatever you want. Now, how do I basically make a custom hotkey? What you do is you go ahead and go to, oh, well, you can't hit Control Alt yet. You need to turn off the customization, but basically go to Preferences, Config, Enable, Customize, turn that off, and now hit Control Alt, click, and it says press any key to assign a custom hotkey. So go ahead and I'm just gonna hit like F1, for example. And now if I hit F1, you can see it pulls it up and I have a custom menu. So if you want this whole tools, you can go control alt, click that, and then assign a hotkey. And then all of a sudden you can see if I hit that, I have a the whole tool sub menu. So you can assign hotkeys to these menus and basically pull them up and use them any way you want. It's an extremely, extremely powerful tool. Um, now, how are you gonna basically customize this to be the way that you want though? What are you going to do? Cause you don't want that whole tools panel. You don't want something that's useless that you're never gonna click. So what I would do, close this, like I said before, and try to work as much as you can with that close. And every time you have to open it and click something, track, is this a common occurrence? Is this something that you always need to use? Put those in the sub menus, that way, you have a sub menu that is designed for you. Don't listen to anyone else. Uh, use your own workflow and customize it to that. Don't try and follow me. Don't try and you know have a workflow that looks exactly like mine. Uh, try and customize it to, to your own. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your time. Have an awesome day.